understand what is the difference between 104 or 303 or 900 you guys have any questions or before before i start off you guys can give me a simple introduction and what is your experience or you already know the aws or azure any other public cloud can, can you just give me simple simple introduction anup Uh, hi, my name is Sunil. Um, I'm a SAP uh, basis on a consultant. I got uh, no experience of Azure or any cloud, but I'm yeah, keen to learn on Azure because that's my next project. Um, I've been attending some seminars and other other um, boot camps. Uh, that's all experience I have. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, and Satish? Yeah, myself. Not audible. Bit louder. Uh, hello. Yeah, bit louder. Bit louder, please. Yeah, I got couple of a couple of uh, feedbacks here, and uh, WhatsApp basis, uh, I guess Sunil, right? And I do have some of the network engineers and some developer. I don't know who is this. Just a moment. Uh. Network engineer Gopi, he didn't join. Lalit has submitted. Lalit has submitted. Let me quickly look at it. Windows L3, Lalit, you have any experience in uh, Azure or any other public cloud platform? Anup, you are unmu you are unmuted. Yeah, you can you can tell me. Uh, my name is Anup Krishna, and I'm uh, I working in Excel and I need Azure to learn. But the uh, future is uh, of Azure, actually. So my company uh, yep. doing on uh, Azure. So I need to learn. Yeah, Lalit. <laughs> I got a noise from you. You can, you can tell me. Yes. Hi, all. Uh, my name is Mahinder. So I'm working in Accenture uh, as a AWS uh, DevOps lead. So we are uh, implementing Azure for migrating AWS projects to Azure. So okay. to learn Azure. Okay. So let me, let me start. So myself, Srinivas, I'm currently working as a solution architect. Um, I also work on uh, data centers. Also, I work on uh, AWS and Azure. This, this is, in short, my experience. I haven't updated my LinkedIn profile. Let me open up quickly here, if I can. It's been a long, I never updated this. But I have started this in almost like a uh, few months back and uploaded a couple of virtualization and azure and aws stuff and if you guys want to refer you can check it over there let's see you know sir am i, am I audible yeah good, good okay sir my name is lalit i'm working in cap and uh, 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 i will be um, getting this azure project in the next two months so company has told me that uh, i i have to prepare in uh, prepare me in, in azure so I'm, I'm working since 2019 and from after 2012 i haven't even updated this program. okay uh, I, i'll just skip this i'll keep this away so let's start and basically the pro the problem statement is i've seen a lot of people are discussing in other portals whether i should learn az 900 or i should learn az 104 or i should learn az 300 300 is no more now it's 303 okay. and 103 is no more it's now replaced with 104 right this, this everyone knows this i believe right um i think i think if 103 is still there it's gonna be uh expiring in september or later let me show you right let me show you 104 
a beta the replacement of 103 already beta is in place so 103 is no longer valid uh, yeah uh, i think it's 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 valid till september they have extended the date for 103 because of the covid i mean ideally all these all these all these courses should have expired by march end last march end okay they got yeah. extended due to this covid and all otherwise yeah. see so <clears throat> let's let's ha let's have a look into let's have a look into all the three i don't believe az 900 will be required for the professionals which are already having around uh, i'll say 10 years five years six years four years into it and still uh, you're looking at the az 900 is like uh, you're looking at how to learn the cycle you all you know already you already know how to write the four wheeler and how to write the Two wheeler at least, but still you're looking at how to learn the bicycle, how to ride the bicycle. It's not required, so I'll skip that 900 away. So let's compare 303 and 104. Okay, if you look at most of the technical terminologies, Active Directory, I'll not go inside. Just look at the indexes. Okay, are back. Even you'll have you'll have a same thing. Yeah, guys, please be on mute. If you're not talking, be on mute. Let me mute you. Yeah, right. So I hope from my side there is no noise. So somewhere you will identify Active Directory is there, right? And hybrid entries and managing security and stuff. But in, even though in 104 you'll have all these all these things. Okay, but in terms of administration point of view, the dimension is a little different. And if you look at the subscription and governance. Anyway, you have to you have to understand what is subscription, what is resource group, and all. I, I don't believe this should be a problem in one one zero one zero four or three zero three. And look at the storage components, managing storage and stuff. Even you have a storage in somewhere down the line. Governance solutions, apps, manage SQL. No storage, storage, storage. You'll you'll see some storage aspects here implement storage accounts it is there okay and virtual machines high availability scalability how to deploy virtual machine and how to deploy web apps networking right and what else troubleshooting networking backup and uh, D dr right that's it and 104 is done and go to 1303 you will see everything what they have in the 104 in addition to that, if you scroll down at the end, okay, this is some Kubernetes overview and the containers. What is this and how you can deploy the container platform as a service component? I'm talking about this is covered in 303 and some of the platform as a service database components. That's it, nothing else. You can you can review both and see the, the way of examination or the, the way of. Uh, Scenario scenario generation might be different because 303 is more of designing a technical things and 104 is more of managing the existing technical stuff, right? So, but if you look at the component wise, all the components are same. More, a couple of additional components that they have included in 303. So for that reason only, I have consolidated this in my, I mean, considering my past experience and stuff, I have included everything into segregated components. So basically what I did, I've, I've taken all the components in the network. You guys can review it and let me know if something is missing. I can add it to this. So we'll start with the network first as a base. Then we'll talk about little virtual machines and stuff, how you will manage and stuff in terms of managing the virtual machines and how you will deploy and design and manage the things. And storage and then backup and recovery and disaster recovery services and then platform as a service components a purely sql stuff and then again platform as a service component but app services or serverless functions you call it as and i'll dedicate some section to active directory authentication role-based access control how you integrate the things and stuff okay and most of the people are looking at the automation and stuff so We'll take this part and this part together to 
automate the things inside the Azure. Right? And also I've included most of the people are asking, okay, can you can you show me how you can deploy the Terraform files and stuff from the uh, DevOps portal? Or you have any other way to do the stuff inside the Azure itself, like kind of automation stuff. And then rest of the rest of the topics I picked up from my past experience building and optimization, how you can do the stuff and analytics couple of these couple of these components are integrated when i'm deploying app service itself i will show you what is that in app insights and stuff i'll not separately deal with these some of the components you will see along with the solution deployment so based on the, my past experience i have created this if you guys can review it and pro, i mean just give me an give me your feedback I, I hope I have covered everything which is covered under 303. Additionally, I have included few things which are really required for everyone to understand in terms of Azure Cloud is concerned. Okay, so you can you can refer. Let me go back to Azure Learning Path. If I if I search about Azure Learning Path, sorry. I'll, I'll come back to you. I got your point. I'll come back to you. I don't want to go. This one man. So if someone looking for certification stuff, you can see. Kind of administrator, you'll definitely get associate at front 104 or 103. So both are available at the moment. You can try both, but <clears throat> see, both are available at the moment. Okay, so I picked up course outlines from here. This is what I picked up. Okay, if you guys want to compare, you can go and verify here, right? So let's move on. This is simple overview that on uh, course content what we have. Okay, let me see what someone pinged me something. Any topics in AZ120 planning and administering Azure SAP workloads? Okay, I'm not a basis admin, but if I can do it. I'll be able to help you. I'll, I'll have to see whether I can uh, deploy the things in uh, related to 120 or not. Just a moment, give me. Because everything is fall from If I say yes, if I don't know something, how I can say yes? I never worked on SAP basis. So I, I got this from some other portal. They, they defined in uh, some role based functionality basis. So everywhere they mention AZ900 as an optional. That means if you know it, well and good. Even if you don't know it, it's okay. There's nothing inside AZ900. If you guys are already know what is Azure, what is cloud, what is uh, platform as a service, what is infrastructure as a service, or software as a service, or anything as a service, whatever the technical terminology, what they have in the in the bookist bookist terminology. So if you know some of those terms, then you're good to skip 900 so if you're looking at solutions or system admin 104 and then he's suggesting some 400 if you want to go and develop your skills in administration and automation kind of devops engineer so this is one path so what i'm trying what i'm looking at i'm looking at this point okay so basically i'm targeting something to this okay i'm 100 percent sure i'm 100 percent sure this will be integrated into this if you are, if you are looking at admin perspective you do hands-on whatever the scenarios that we're gonna cover in 303 that will 100 percent cover all 104 concepts that, that, that's what a guarantee I can give you. And apart from that, 
we'll try to give you some overview on how you can develop and design the solutions within within Azure based on <coughs> based on my past experience. That's what I can tell you. And 304 is entirely designing and understanding the customer requirements and providing the cost efficient solutions. This is entirely different, more of analytical and cost saving perspective. This we are not going to cover. So my target is this. So before we start start off this, I just want to understand few things. Okay, I want and I want to understand few things. What is this traditional? Traditional on prem and public cloud. Okay, so when I say public cloud, you can take anything that may be AWS or Azure or GCP, it doesn't matter. They will offer you services, very well known terminology. Well -known be on mute, guys. Okay, so very well known terminologies. One is infrastructure as a service, another one is platform as a service, another one is software as a service, and there is another thing everyone is more interested about. Record. So park this technical high fund or technical terminology said, let's try to understand what is this first of all. Let's say if I want to host any website or a simple web service on a Linux machine in traditional way, how you will deal with it? What all things are you need? So I need at least one server one switch and some ISP, right? some ISP who can give you one public IP at least and configure everything on a switch and connect your server with the switch and host your website. Okay, so I don't have a public IP at the moment. My internet service is entirely down on that particular environment. I have a switch and I have a server. Let's try to deploy one Linux server and try to install something. How to do that manually if you are sitting in your premise and you're managing your own stuff nothing related to public cloud nothing related to anything okay you have everything on your control so how to do that let's see so what i will do i'll simply go to i have one esxa server so just a moment I'll refresh This is my home lab setup. Okay, I'll simply create a machine next. Okay. So I'll put a Linux. <coughs> Ubuntu. I'll take a SSD, right? Everything is in my control. So what I will do, I'll put four CPU and four GB RAM, sixteen GB hard drive. I'll put a thin provisioning and base network. That's it. And connect it to one of the ISO file which I have uploaded in my legacy slow sata drive in 20 so by the way 20.04 is the latest linux offering that will really release in last march which is still not available in your public cloud in aws or azure you can you can manually export or you can create your own amis or you can create your own arm templates or custom images that's it finish Power on. Let's see. One. Okay, 
so it's loading i will keep that aside now the same thing i want to achieve in public cloud how to do that i will go to aws ec2 also i'll go to azure snowman So I'll go to AWS EC2 instance, launch, and same Ubuntu. Eighteen oh four twenty is still not available here. If you look it, if you want, right? So I'll select T2 Micro, which is free somewhere in my virtual subnet okay and what i will do i'll simply put it so what it will do it will automatically install nginx web server and keep the machine ready that's it the machine is ready same thing i'll go to azure and go to virtual machines my physical server it is still asking for okay english done continue without network no i want to configure the network v4 v4 and manual ip 192.168.1.0 slash 24 to 168.1.101 100 so anyway it is not going to send any data onto internet done no proxy server it will not go to internet and it will take entire 16 gb it will format entire 16 gb i am fine with it Give some password and stuff. Just a moment. Yeah, open SSH. At least I need to log in, right? That's it. So my my own machine at my my premise, it start deploying. By the time I, I've completed the configuration, if I go to AWS, my server is already up and running. Okay, let me create a machine in Azure as well. Come on, internet is too slow. Yeah, so my machine is already up and running in AWS. So copy this public IP. Ubuntu is the username, and I have a keys already saved somewhere. So let me change the settings a little bit. Okay. So service nginx status. It's already running. So what I will do, I'll just copy this and paste it on browser. You guys can test it if you want. Web server is already up and running. 
the same IP if you access, you will get the same output. Okay. Similarly, if I want to deploy something on my on premise, sorry, on my Azure demo Nginx, I'll place this in HTS. Okay. I don't have a key at the moment, so I'll put my own password. Just a moment. We'll finish this off and then we'll discuss what is the difference between your on premise and your cloud machines. Leave about the network that will automatically pick something. Same IP I can get update. Service not required, it will automatically start a service in Azure. Or else we'll log in and start the service. That's a different. Let's come on. In AWS, hardly took around two minutes to deploy the machine, or, or less than a minute. And let's deploy machine in Azure as well. Okay, so machine is deploying in Azure. And let's see my on-premise machine is still installing still configuring something and i'm installing a server in my on-premise it is taking us let's say 15 or 20 minutes i after afterwards what i will do i'll create a custom image and start deploying the same configuration again and again but the problem is the problem is i'm more interested in a website that can be accessed over public internet but I don't have a public IP again I'll have to go and request my Tata Sky service provider Tata Sky broadband I need to place a request for a public IP if they will offer something then I can apply it here and I can assign this to my Linux machine then only I can host a website in my traditional way but when it comes to cloud everything is everything is simply packed and available in terms of components that you take it as AWS you take it as Azure doesn't matter okay each and everything is packed in terms of a component you just pick and attach to your machine okay so considering this you have a virtual machine you can log in into machine and you can manage by yourself but you cannot really touch the backend If you are if you are allowed to touch the backend hardware, then it's a traditional concept. But still, in AWS or Azure, nowadays they come up with managed host. Managed host means they will dedicate one host to you. Okay, you do whatever you want to do. Again, that comes under infrastructure as a service. That's not considered as a hosted service. You can, you can treat that as infrastructure as a well. they will give you a server. And again, you have to depend on uh, their network virtual network you, know, you really don't purchase a network device and connect it to hosted service that what they have offered you and deploy the services that is not going to happen right so when it comes to infrastructure as a service or the traditional way what is the difference let's pick the traditional way so if I say traditional way have your server okay and you'll have your network both are in your control and on top of your hardware you can install your own virtualization platform it is up to you okay you call it as hypervisor or and you can create your own machine right similarly you have your own switch Cisco right how to do that let me go to my switch okay and I have my own switch and I can create my own network VLAN management and stuff okay 
<coughs> simple L3 switch and I can create my own network topology and I will create one specific VLAN inside it and I'll pick one of the IP from a dedicated VLAN I will assign this to me I will assign to this machine I'll ask everyone to use this so from outside world or from a remote office from remote office if someone is trying to connect they must come via some secure channel called site to site VPN okay imagine remote office is in somewhere else and your infrastructure is hosted in some hosting data center right in that case what do you need you need to have a firewall or else at least a public IP to access in a insecure channel but if you look at the things I can touch my hardware and both the server and networks and I can control my hypervisor, I can control my virtual network VLANs and I can create a VM and I can manipulate the things however I want to. This is when, you are, when I'm talking about traditional on-premise. Right? I can log into switch and if I want I can simply create one more VLAN. Okay. And I can simply define one more class C subnet and attached to virtual machine or else if I need more virtual much more, more virtual machines I can simply right click and create okay but I'll have to play within the boundary of my available resources okay let's see let me reboot this I'm going to unbound it's okay so let me just give me a moment I'll unbound this So it will reboot now, leave it, so that will automatically <clears throat> get rebooted, yeah fine. So when, I, when I'm talking about when I'm talking about on-premise, most of the stuff in your team or individual's control you have a network L1, L2, L3 admins, those who are responsible to manage this stuff and you have your infra L1, L2, L3 admin, those who are responsible to manage, perform day-to-day -day activities on your hardware infrastructure. If you are a Windows admin, you are more interested on this level. If you are VMware admin, you are more interested on this. If you are a data center admin, you are more interested on your hardware failures and walk, walk into the data center and see if there are any failures and stuff. Then your job role is defined based on the components what we have here okay let's keep this aside let's move on to public cloud okay i'm not going to define or, or describe the textbook terminologies on public cloud simply you have your own data center and now you are hosting your services on someone else's data center that i call it as a public cloud right they will offer the services in various forms. Let's understand. First thing is infrastructure as a service. Means what they will do, you need a virtual machine or you need a public IP or you need a set of private IPs to host some of your services, servers or serverless functions or databases or XYZ, whatever, right? So if I talk about infrastructure as a service means hardware will remain hardware. Without hardware, you cannot do anything. But still hardware is there. And without virtualization, there is no cloud. Your hypervisor is still there. On top of your virtual machine is created and you are responsible for this. So in this scenario, what happens? you will lose the control on these two aspects. You don't know what is the hardware model and stuff. You don't know what is the hypervisor and how you will connect and manage and do the upgrades or reboot or resource management within the hypervisor. You will never ever touch these two components. Only the granular level access what you'll get is, you'll get a simple well 
facilities and geo interface console.aws.com for aws and portal.azure.com for azure and console.gcp.com whatever right so you'll get these portals and simply select few things it will take the instruction and hand over to some of the services what they have running on the back end like if you are expert in vCloud director in VMware vCloud director is one of the private cloud offering platform so similarly it will pick the request and it will go and pick your image if you said I have 200 plus images sitting on my storage here example means Windows 10 images Linux 10 images and some other operating system 10 images and some of my network appliances a barracuda firewall virtual firewall or maybe uh, Paul Alter firewall virtual appliances all these things are stored on my content library whatever the option that you have selected on GUI it will go and pick and deploy it on the same hypervisor it will turn on one machine and you never know where this machine is landed on which hypervisor on which hardware you don't know all those details because this is abstraction layer between your virtual machine and the backend hardware which will purely controlled by your provider service service provider is some of your public cloud offer offering platform okay so you'll you'll see on your screen this is server name this is ip this is subnet this is public ip and you connect if you want to connect via public ip or if you want to secure it you you deploy you adapt some more components and secure the environment and start using it this is basically when we talk about infrastructure as a service examples any virtual machine or network components or firewalls will deploy as an appliance or you see one public ip that also comes under Infrastructure as a service component, right? Then what is this second component platform as a service? Platform as a service. Let's take a simple scenario. You have some of your developers, some of your developers, who, the startup developers started working on some of the coding. Okay. As part of the integration testing, they need at least one relational database. If I say relational database, that might be MySQL or traditional licensed SQL or the Postgres SQL, whatever. Doesn't matter. They need one R relational database system, RDS, so that they can build a schema very quickly and they can integrate with the application what they have developed and do the UAT testing. Okay. Now, if you place this request to some of the public cloud platform, what you have to do? You have to create a machine. Okay. And then install a SQL and create a database and you'll get some connection string. Give it to the team. They will create a schema on top of it. I don't want to manage all these things. What I'll do, I'll simply go to Azure, select database as a platform as a service component. I will deploy 5DTU machine or 5DTU DB container. We'll discuss more in detail later on. So what it will do, it will straight away will offer you the connection string. Okay, simple connection string. You will integrate with your code and perform the testing. Once everything is done, vanish what is the server you don't know what is the backend hardware you don't know so in this platform as a service component what happens again there is a hardware in the backend hypervisor is still there and virtual machine is still there but on top of one sql instance will be deployed on top of that one sql db will be db container will be created you will connect to the instance and you can manage the DB, right? But all these three layers will be abstracted, your hardware and your hypervisor and your virtual machine, everything will be revoked or controlled by your public 
cloud platform owner only you are interested on this database you don't know what is there on the back end you are least bothered about all these things then you just pay me for this database for a 2 hours okay 38 rupees i'm more than happy my testing is done i can plan for code production release right that is where your platform as a service component will come into picture or you have n number of scenarios based on the customer environment based on the customer requirement the dimension of this platform as a service or infrastructure as a service components will always vary then there is another thing one last thing software as a service okay for the same startup you have 10 people working on same project okay earlier you gave them a laptops and they are coming on a day to day working and going okay for some reason your fundraiser who has given this opportunity has asked everyone should be equipped with their own personal email ids with your startup name again who will who will spend all these things it's again cost right as of now i'm managing everything via gmail personal gmails so you have to go with some custom domain purchase and create a mailboxes or purchase some exchange box install or create one virtual machine or install exchange on top of it and integrate with your active directory and create a mailboxes for 10 people i cannot hire two more exchange admins or a vmware admins or any other people so what i will do i'll go with o365 which is default offering of microsoft mailboxes o365 mailbox and first of all what i will do i will purchase one domain for my startup whatever the domain i will integrate with o365 i will create 10 different mailboxes okay this is as a service i am getting these mailboxes with unlimited space and <clears throat> per month 300 dollars or something example i am not really sure about the costing and stuff but <clears throat> per mailbox 300 dollars per month you will get entire suit you are o365 ms office and your teams skype for business sharepoint you will get everything in the bundle but you you have a premium fundraiser you'll they will give you some code in the sense voucher you will apply it straight away 60 percent saving on your building then you will get it for let's say 100 dollars per month per mailbox okay this you call it as software as a service offering you cannot really touch it you cannot really control it and you cannot really manipulate it what they are giving you have to take as it is and use it for your day-to-day -day. this is one more offering you can treat as a software as a service fair enough understood any questions up to this okay let's see if my machine is on logged in okay so see it is in my control let me go back to azure machine is ready on okay if you want to play with azure you have to learn how to do yoga if you are habituated to aws then you definitely have to start learning yoga because it, this is that much slow session okay so this machine i have config this is on my aws okay what i will do ssh i'll connect ssh i'll connect to the machine right this is my azure machine see 
now i logged into azure machine i have config you'll see private ip which is matching to this okay if you look at what i did i have created one machine in aws and i logged into the aws machine and again i went to azure i created one more machine i logged into the machine from aws to azure from my home but i do have another machine at my home which cannot send the data to internet at the moment but i can log in internally because the internet configuration is missing okay net tools not installed leave about it if a net tools is not there i cannot do anything i cannot go and install the everything now but let's see what is the ip address and stuff if it will populate here 101 okay let's take one more terminal if you already have some experience it will be like just boring if you don't know anything about infra and all it will be like confusing I logged into my own machine which is hosted on my premises but it cannot send any data to internet if i say thing google.com it cannot send because internet connectivity is not there from that physical host and if i say ping google.com it is pinging right service nginx start oh it is already start su service nginx status it is running but why i am not getting the output since very long it is rotating rotating and timed out because network security the port is not allowed here 300 is allowed let me add a port port 80 for http that's it wait for a few minutes and then if you refresh it you will see the website is hosted on the public ip but if i want to do the same thing on my on premise machine which is this right i i'll have to go and talk to my vendor first and after three days i'll get a public ip then again i need to configure it in such a way so that this machine will send the data to internet via the dedicated public ip and again i have to go to godaddy and get some ip sorry get some domain for my hosting then integrate with my server name or a public ip what we have and then you will be able to access it via www.soandso.com if the same thing i want to implement using one of the public cloud platform it is like two minutes okay the same thing if i want to implement on my premise i'll have to plan well in, well in advance so at least i'll plan it for a week prior then only i can achieve it the same thing right now i deployed a machine i'm just sitting ideal because i cannot do anything until unless i have a public ip let's see if the rule is applied see the rule is applied you can view the website okay with this i'll stop here so the the aim is we'll try to start in this hierarchy so if you guys want to review it if you are interested to continue i'll start in this hierarchy we'll discuss more about these components for a couple of days and then i'll start with the networking i'll dedicate this for another another seven to ten days based on the scenarios and then we will not spend much time on virtual machines because most of the people know how to create a machines nowadays from the youtube so i don't i don't really think that i need to show something on how to create a virtual machine and stuff but if you are looking at some of the fine tuning options and stuff i'll definitely spend some time on this then we'll go ahead in the storage and we'll spend some more time on databases and serverless functions okay that's the plan so normally it takes can you share this in group what just a moment we'll, we'll take a questions in some time just give me like two minutes okay 
so the plan is even if i start from tomorrow it takes around 40 days daily one hour that's what my minimum expectation so considering past sessions and all it will take around 40 hours and i'll charge 12000 for this okay and i have created the group you have for two numbers of the same group one is the one which i have sent in messages on the group another one is i'll ping you uh, another number is it's my personal you can ping me on both you can we can put it on the group it's okay so we can discuss further on the group and we can see right. with this i'll stop here on the discussion part if you guys have any questions you can ask now yeah i'll put the i'll put the course content timings timings 8 sorry the same timing 9 30 to 10 30 sometimes it may extend till 10 45 if you people are having more more and more queries i cannot really skip and go away right so i'll keep this 15 minutes for buffer question and answers every day i'll try to be every day the same way 100 percent practical means i don't have any ppts i don't have any theoretical knowledge even i don't know the theory part i know only hands-on part even if you ask me some textbook questions or if you go to some portal and read some article and if you ask me i will not be able to help you out but i can tell you the scenarios in a different way okay any other questions from anyone So that I can, uh, we still have four minutes. If you guys want to ask something, it will be 100% practical. Who is this admin? May I know your name, please? No, Jagan, I cannot hear you. You can type the question over there. It's okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah, tell me. So, is this 100% practical? If I say 100% practical, then I'm lying. I know. No, no. I'll teach yeah. what I know. But most of the times, I'll try to make it as a scenario basis only. There is no theoretical concepts and there is no PPT, is nothing. It's it's on a practical basis only. But I cannot show you the real customer environment. I cannot log into other customers where I'm working on. I cannot log in and show that. But what I can tell you is, I'll, I'll try to make the make the sessions as much as i can on a practical basis only very Do less 10 or 10 or 15 sorry or 10 or 15 percent of theoretical i can say out of all the sessions okay so uh, so do you have any tasks after the training if you can suggest some task like to do this what i'll do is, so what I'll do is whatever the whatever the way i'm teaching i'll record everything i'll give it to you all the recordings okay you can refer and practice it that is one way another way is if you want to if you want to be more interactive and you want to do more practice and stuff if you want to gain more hands-on knowledge then you come up with the scenarios considering your past experience and i'll be able to help you with the solution okay or else i can give you i can give you some of the scenarios if you want to do a practice and we also means i also require this uh, terraform knowledge so yesterday night i was asking about you the, on that terraform yeah uh, so terraform if i if i say about terraform i'll teach you end to end that is not going to be a azure training that is going to be terraform tool training which is not a part of this but i what i can tell you is i can give you an overview let's say you want to prepare a biryani okay you don't know the ingredients what you will do open a youtube after 10 minutes, close the video. Same thing with the Terraform. You don't know anything about Azure. You don't know anything about AWS. What component, what is the significance of that particular component when you're deploying for any customer? What you'll write in the Terraform code? 
if someone is saying learn terraform if someone is saying learn learn terraform that means they are asking you to learn public cloud platform first then go with the terraform it is not vice versa yeah true that's what so so do you also uh, provide training on terraform I, I, no 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 I, it's not a dedicated it's not a dedicated training on a terraform i can give you a few scenarios or i can give you a few classes on the basic how you can do the things using terraform because we have a lot of infrastructure as a core requirements nowadays in every customer environment so some people will use powershell some people will use bash some will use azure cli some will use the ci cd with your terraforms right so multiple ways and some people purely they will deploy everything on json but for each and every customer the requirement will vary and i am also human i cannot learn all these things even i don't know what is hash include stdio.h till today i don't know what what that would do so i'm i'm dumb in coding but i will try to give you as much as i can when it comes to json and ml or a terraform but i will not promise you saying i I'll, i'll teach everything on a terraform okay okay fine understood yeah i yeah, got it thank you so can you share me this video because i was i, just, I was joined in between the it's fine yeah i'll upload this and I'll, i can share it with you if you are if you want if you'd like to continue you'll get all these videos later on but for yeah, this I one or two you. videos i'll share it with you yeah thank you okay any other thank any you. other queries from anyone yeah hi sinwa this is sunil so i got one question like um so on every day or or any every session you'll give the overview and then uh, you'll give us uh, uh, the, the, like a hands on session is that right let's make it in a different way what we will do is we'll we'll try to define some objective and how we'll try to identify how we can achieve that objective yep yep the more clear so, yeah that's perfect Be- because we are uh, especially i am new to azure and uh, some of the things may be new for me um, so if you figure more practical hands on then i have to go back and uh you know read the, all the topics then i have to come to this session that's the only way i can do it that's, that's the plan yeah we will not will not go in a hurry but what sure. we will do is we'll, we'll try to cover the basics as much as we can because as i said i'll try to incorporate your 900 your 104 and 303 i'll try to touch upon everything okay okay cool. because if i straight away jump on to the 303 half of the people will go mad yeah yeah that's right especially me <laughs> No, no. It, it happens to most of the people because even even if you consider 10 years of past experience in, a, in, a, in their respective job roles if a vmware admin or a windows admin he knows everything end to end between windows and vmware but he never knows what is the sand storage he never knows what is the network yeah. very hardly okay. you'll see the people those those who connect the dots okay, okay. It, it is like it is like it's impossible for them to grasp those things in a single shot so yeah, we'll have yeah. to consider them then we'll have to go accordingly that's what the plan is okay, okay. fine yeah okay. so topic? it's a, yeah, yeah uh, so it's monday to friday right not on the weekends uh, we'll try to be on weekends as well we'll take a random because i'm also working for some of the other customers even i may need i may need to skip in some of those weekdays because if i'm working too late in the night and okay. i cannot i cannot take the session in the morning i'll have to skip for some time maybe randomly i'll not say every day but if that happens then probably will will have to sit on saturdays as well sometimes okay, but sure, definitely sure. definitely but... sunday is definite off okay monday to saturday you can consider um okay and 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 all the sessions will be recorded right yes okay just I'll in record case everything. If, if anybody misses it i'll i'll record everything i'll share it to everyone who has opted for it okay and okay I'll, I'll, for now i'll use the google drive because i don't have a costing to use a vimeo and other stuff but we'll use it the google drive for, for now because it, it will support at least 20 to 30 people to watch the videos that's not an issue okay cool thank you okay yeah any any other questions from anyone one so through google drive so even i can download those videos right so you will not uh, give us a download permission you 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 can view it okay because it's been almost like 4 years i'm giving a training some people already downloaded and uploaded in their personal youtube and they reached 2000 subscribers i'm still i'm at 1000 because i am not a youtuber okay 
Yeah, that's true. But the problem is when you when you are maintaining multiple batches, so there will be a problem with sharing. What I'll do is I'll create a new account for this batch. Okay, and I'll upload videos only for this batch. That's it. And I'll not club with any other batches because if that is that filled up. And when the people are started using it, you will see random playing errors. That I know. That for that reason only, I'm trying to create. Uh, this batch is May 2020, right? I'll create one account with May 2020. I'll upload, start uploading the videos into that. You'll get 15 GB, but it will not go beyond 3 GB because the, each and every session is almost like 60, 70, hardly 100 MB videos. Okay, fine. Cisco works very well. But not like a uh, go to meeting and other stuff, they will get 200 MB, 250 MB files. That's a different, yeah. Satish, Mahinder, Lalit, Jagan, Anup, admin, I don't know what his name, and Ramesh, Virender. I have Sunil. Around 10 people are there, okay. You have to think of it and please confirm on the group if you guys are interested, okay. Any prerequisite? Who is this? Admin, your name, please, man. How how I can all admin, admin, admin. Salim Khan. Okay, fine. Yeah. Uh, prerequisite. You know how Windows works, how Linux works. At least. What is your past experience? <laughs> Type it quickly. If you know the basic Linux or working on hardware engineering. Working as a hardware engineer. Okay, fine. Then you should know some of these basic terminologies. It's okay. Even if you are a network admin, you can start learning the AWS or Azure. Doesn't matter. Okay. Finding only on Azure, right? um, Sorry. So you will cover only the Azure part, right? Azure part. Only Azure, yeah. Only Azure. Only Azure 303. Yeah. AWS that is entirely different. AWS solution architecture that is again another 40 days. This Azure 303. 303 is let me show you. We have you look at the certification path. Okay, they have multiple course codes for each and everything. 303 is I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, this one. Let me zoom a little bit. 303 is more of understanding the components and architecting those components for your customer. In the sense, you have a number of things available in the market within AWS Marketplace or Azure Marketplace. You need to understand which component I need to use on which situation. That more comes under 303. So when I talk about 104, setup is already there. Customer is already using it. Day-to-day -day activities how you will manage. That is more of that thing. 104 is more of admin administration. This is more of understanding and designing things. Clear? Yeah. So any other questions from anyone or else we can wrap it? I've seen already people have gone. Mahender, you only asked me, right? Few questions on uh, chat yesterday and day before. <laughs> Ah uh, yes. Okay. You already working on Azure? Or... No, I am learning Azure, uh, Srinivas. So just I had some questions. Yes. It's okay. Yeah. So, fine. Fine. Yeah. Are we good to close up? Yes. yes. Be on mute. Be on mute. Okay, guys. I'll I'll stop here. Okay. Let's see. Tomorrow, the same bridge is available for tomorrow. From tomorrow onwards, we'll start off more of technical stuff. Okay, you can join on the same time, and after third day, you can think of it, and you can see how many people are, uh, would like to go further, and then I'll take the payment after third day. Is it fine? All right. Yeah. Chalo. Stop here. Let's